pagsisida ng mga posibilidad, ng tagumpay o kabiguan, ng ligaya o lungkot. Kaya marapat lamang na tanggapin si Yesu Kristo bilang tagapagligtas at Panginoon. At matapos yon ay panariwain ang katapatan at paglapit sa Kanya bawat araw o day by day. Ang day by day ay naglalayong umalalay sa pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay kristyano. Narito po si Pastor Ed Lapis sa mensaheng pinamagatang... Come and see. Let's open our Bibles in John chapter 1, verses 35 to 41. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you seeing? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and spent the day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We had found the Messiah. That is the Christ. And he brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. And Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophet also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And may the Lord bless us through the reading of His Word. Kaya pag pinag-usapan po natin yung disciples, disciple calling, disciple making, This is the watershed of all that. And let us take a look at the openings and the invitations. Mapapansin po natin that one, Andrew, and another disciple, believed to be John, were called. Hindi binigyan po ng pangalan, subalit pinaniniwalaan ng mga marurunong at mga nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos ito ay John. Andrew and another disciple believed to be John. And let's take a look at the opening. The opening for the calling of the disciple was John's, I mean, John the Baptizer's, Endorsement. Let's not confuse the two Johns here. John the Baptizer and John the Beloved. So, John's endorsement, in verse 36, when people who were with him before were with him that day and Jesus was there, sabi niya, Look, the Lamb of God. That was an introduction. That was an opening. John, who had a credential, telling everybody else, Look, that one is the Lamb of God. And what else was the opening? Jesus asked these people who followed him, these two men, what do you want? A very beautiful opening coming from the Lord and a very beautiful opening coming from the people who were interested with Jesus. Sabi nila, Rabbi, where are you staying? Puro mga tanong. Maganda pong opening yung mga tanong so long as we are polite at hindi confrontational yung question. They did not open with statements that could probably unsettle another person But questions, so they were very, very open because any answer could come because of these questions. And then let's take a look at the invitation. From the Lord, nung sinabi niya, ano bang gusto ninyo? What do you want? Sabi naman ng mga nagtatanong, saan po ba kayo nakatira? It's a very beautiful opening na siguro hindi naman talaga sila interesado kung saan sila nakatira ang Panginoon. Pero magandang tanong para lang to break the ice and to start a conversation going. And then the Lord said, come and you will see. 
very non-threatening, hindi sinabing papalitan ko kayo, babaguhin ko kayo, magigi kayo makadyos, tatalikuran nyo ang inyong mga kasalanan, sabi ng Panginoon, come, and you will see. Many times, when we invite people to the Lord, they are threatened. Dahil sabihin natin, Hoy, panayang sigarilyo mo, sumama ka sa Bible study ko at matitigil yan. Isang niya, ayaw kang tumigil, hindi ako pupunta sa Bible study na yan. O kaya, o ikaw, madyong ka ng madyong, sumama ka sa akin, at nang matigil lang yung kama madyong. O ganyan, kumisan, hindi po tayo tactful sa pag-imbita sa mga tao. Kaya natatakot. Bagamat alam natin, that any close encounter with the Lord really changes, it should not be preempted kailangan ay uh, iniimbita lang natin in a very neutral way. May nagtatanong, ay ano ba naman yung Bible sabi na yan? Come and see. Nung maalaman mo. Ano ba yung tinuturo sa inyong church? Come and see. Napakaganda tong opening. It's very, very uh, non-threatening. At anong bunga? They went with him. And not only that, they spent the night with Jesus. Pag nilagyan po natin yung extensive of ideas, sabi ni John, ayan! Ayan ang Lamb of God, the Son of God. Ayan ang siya, ang tagapagligtas. Yung mga dati niyang followers, sumunod kay Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus, what do you want? Anong gusto niyo? Eh, saan po ba kayo nakatina? Hindi rin nila sinabi ko anong gusto nila. Ay, di sumama kayo at nang makita ninyo. Hindi sumama nga sila. At ang naging bunga, they spent the night with Him. I like to believe that many wonderful things happened that night. Yan po ang pag-imbita kay Andrew and the other disciple believed to be John. What about a third person who was invited by the Lord to become his disciple? Simon Peter. Let's take a look at the opening. Si Andrew sabi niya sa kanyang kapatid, We have found the Messiah. Ibig niya sabihin, naghahanap na sila talaga. Not that the incarnation alone was looking for the Messiah and waiting for the Messiah. They too were personally waiting for and looking for the Messiah. So ang opening, sabi kay Simon Peter, We have found the Messiah. And the result, Simon Peter was brought to Jesus. Sa verse 42, we see, and he brought him to Jesus. So, tapto na yung disciples. Pang-apat was Philip. A very interesting guy. Somebody who would be known for great evangelistic work or soul winning. How was the opening? Jesus found Philip. This time, si, si Lord talaga. Yung naunang dalawa, si John ang nag-refer. Yung pangatlo, hinila noong dalawang nauna. Ngayon naman ito, direct si Lord naman ang nakakita sa kanya. And Jesus found Philip according to verse 43. And the invitation was very direct. Sabi niya, follow me. Hindi na come and see. Hindi na very neutral. This was already followership. Direct. Sabi niya, follow me. And the result, Philip not only followed, but also invited Nathanael. You know, this Philip is the guy from whom our country was named. Kasi akala ng iba, uy, walang kwenta ang pangalan ng Pilipinas. We were named after Felipe II, the King of Spain, or Philip II. Eh, kanina naman kaya ipinangalan si Philip II. Alam na naman yung original Philip II. And all Philips were named after this Philip in the Bible. Kaya itong Philippines, we were named after this great evangelist, this great disciple of the Lord. And probably ours is the only country that is named after a disciple or an evangelist, if not among the very few. So maganda po yung ibig sabihin ng ating pangalan. Lampas na natin si Felipe II of Espanya at ang ating tingnan, Philip of the New Testament. Ang pangalapad po na disciple na tinawag ng Panginoon ng araw na yan was Nathaniel. Siya ay pinuntahan ni Philip. How was the opening? Verse 45, Philip found him. And then Philip testified about Jesus. Sabi niya, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. But there was an obstacle. So far, ito pa lang pang-apat na disciple ang nagkaroon ng obstacle para sa maging disciple. Ang impression ni Nathaniel, sabi niya sa verse 46, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? So nakita po natin yung bias nitong si Nathaniel against Nazareth. Why? Because Nazareth was a, a junction. Yun pong mga trade routes, yung mga landas ng mga nangangalakal ay nagtatawid-tawid at nagkukros-cross sa Nazareth. Kung baga ngayon, kahit sa atin pong mga towns, pagka-junction yan o crossing, ano nangyayari? Nagiging mas maunlad kaysa sa ibang mga nasa sulok-sulok at dead end. Pero kasama ng pag-unlad na yan, nagkakaroon ng mga moral corruption. That's why in Nazareth, it is believed that during those times, maraming prostitutes, 
maraming mga gambling uh, activities happening, maraming mga shady deals happening because moneyed merchants were staying there for the night to rest. Sa kanila po mga paglalakbay doon sila nag-overnight. Kaya kung meron tayong mga lugar na kilala nung araw, halimbawa na pugad ng mga mga kasalanan, ng mga nightclub, halimbawa ng mga uh, mga bahay aliwan, pagkatapos doon ang galing. Nung araw po, Olonga po was notorious for this. Na pagka sinabing Olonga po, akala lahat ng tao ay entertainer sa mga Amerikanong na dumadaong doon ng pansamantala. Kaya parang sinabi dito, huy, nakita na namin ang tagapagligtas na inaatay natin. Si Jesus na taga Olonga po. So, Olonga po? May mabuti bang magmumula dyan? Kasi yun ang image. Of course, there was an obstacle. And then how did the Lord overcome these obstacles? Let's take a look at the opening once more. The Lord's statements about Nathaniel were very interesting. So verse 47, sabi niya, When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, He said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Either yun po ay napakatotoo na talagang napakapuro, napakabalisay nitong si Nathaniel, wala siya talagang kasalanan, o kaya ay maaaring matalinghaga ang pagsasalita ng Panginoon. At sinabi niya, eto ang tunay na Israelita, walang kasalanan kahit ano. Maaaring ibig sabihin ay, ayan, tulad ka ng iba, self-righteous and judgmental. The Bible doesn't explain the true intention of the sentence, but it could be read many ways. To the point na nagulat si Nathaniel at nagbigay siya ng question. At yung question niya, naging opening ng kanyang puso. Kasi kanina nakaklose. Eh. Sabi niya, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Eh, pagkita sa kanya ng Panginoon, eto ang isang tunay na Israelita na walang bakit ng kasalanan. Sabi ni Natanya sa verse 48, paano niyo po ako nakilala? Eh, hindi pa naman ginagawa yung introduction. Lumalapit pa lang. Inunahan na ng Panginoon ng statement. And then, let's take a look at Jesus' self-revelation to Natanya. Sa so verse 48b, Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. I-emphasize natin, before Philip called you. Hindi ko pa tinatawag din Philip, hindi mo pa ako pinipintasan, hindi mo pa sinisiraan ang mga taga Nazareth, nakita na kita. At nandun ka sa ilalim, sa lilim ng fig tree. Probably Nathaniel was praying at that time. Probably there was something spiritual happening to him, very specially, under the fig tree. But that event was particularly marked in his memory. To the point that when Jesus mentioned it, anong naging sagot niya? You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Dahil wala namang sigurong nakakaalam na nandito sa fig tree kung ano man ang ginawa niya doon ng spiritual activity, God lang dapat ang nakaalam. Tapos alam nitong si Jesus na taga Nazareth, kaya ang conclusion ni Nathanael, You are God. You are the Son of God. And then let's take a look at the invitation sa verse 46. Pamin si, said Philip. Ito yung invitation ni Philip kay Nathanael. Kasi sabi ni Nathanael, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And hindi nakipagtalo si Philip. Tingnan ninyo. Ang sabi lang niya, come and see. Napakaganda na naman ang invitation. Hindi siya sabi, ba, ano akala mo? Ikaw lang ang marunong? Ikaw lang ang banal? Ano akala mo? Wala namang gagaling sa Nazaret ang mabuti? Bla, bla, bla. Away, away. Diskusyon. Hindi ganun. Sabi lang ni Nathaniel, well, that's your point and I respect that, but why don't you come and see? Ibig sabihin, why don't you come and see if you are right or wrong? Why don't you come and see if he is what he is or what he is that I think he is. Kaya ibinigay pa rin kay Nathaniel yung decision. Alam niyo po yung gano'ng invitation, ay eh, hindi nakakatakot tanggapin. Dahil, uh, sasabihin mo naman eh, total, ako naman ang mag-decide eh. Come and see. And what was the result? Nathaniel would see great things. Sa so, verse 51, sabi ni Lord, na-impress ka na, sinabi ko lang na nado ka sa ilalim ng fig tree. He then added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Higit pa riyan, na-impress ka na riyan pa lang. Higit pa riyan, makakakita ka pa ng maraming mabubutit, magagandang mga bagay. And then what are the great truths concerning Jesus that we have learned from this story so far? That He is the Lamb of God. So far, ngayon pa lang sinabi. Marami po tayo sigurong alam na tungkol kay Jesus. But remember, when we review His life and review His ministry, we presume na yun pa lang na i-encounter nating verses ang alam natin tungkol sa Kanya so that we can have a fresh uh, look at the whole story and the person of Jesus Christ. Now we know that He is the Lamb of God. Nung unang panahon, daan-daang taon, marahil ay libong taon, ang Israel ay nag-o-offer ng lamb, mga tupa, for the forgiveness of their sins. 
in a vicarious way. Representative nila yung lamb na pinaniniwalaan nila pag yun ay kinatay, na may paniniwala silang may darating na tunay na lamb of God sa future, eh, mabapatawan ng kanilang kasalanan. Pero ngayon, sinabi na ni John, He is the Lamb of God. So, tama na ang offering-offering, tama na ang sacrifices, tama na ang mga pag-aalay ng mga hayop. Kaya nga po sa ating mga tribal brothers and sisters in the Lord, oras na sila'y tumanggap na kay Kristo, ay tinuturoan natin na tama na yung pag-offer ng mga hayop, pagkakatay ng mga manok, baboy at kung ano-ano pat mga kalabaw para sa kabanalan o para sa religious work or to appease God or whatever. Because Christ is already the Lamb of God. Nung siya ay inoffer, nung ang dugo niya ay tumigis, ang kanyang katawan ay namatay bilang offering, tapos na ang lahat ng offering. This is now the final statement on all offerings. That we now have to look backward to it and it is as good as happening to us right now. That's why He is the Lamb of God. Sa mga iba pang mga religious ha, Houses, sinasabi pa yan. Kordero ng Diyos na nag-aalis ang kasalanan ng sanglibutan. Yumuyuko pa ang mga tao pag sinasabi yan. At ang aking dalangin na uunawa ang lubos, yung ibig sabihin ng kordero ng Diyos or the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Because if you believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, then you no longer will go through a lot of sacrifices for the forgiveness of your sins. Kaya pa kami meron pong mga nagsasabing, eh, kami rin ay gimana ng palataya, naniniwala rin kami kay Kristo, pero pinapahirapan ng sarili to earn points in heaven, o kaya ay nagsasakripisyo para magkaroon ng kaligtasan, eh hindi nila nauunawaan ng lubos ang ibig sabihin that here, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That I will not have to take it away myself because I cannot anyway, but Jesus takes it away. And if I believe in Jesus, if I accept Him as my Lord and Savior, His death is as good as mine, and His blood is good for my sins. Kaya napaka-loaded yung statement ni John, Here, here is the Lamb of God. So that's what we learn about Him. Second, that He is non-threatening. Bakit si Cristo wala pa natang inimbita na tumanggi? Bakit tayo mga Kristiyano maraming iniimbita tumatanggi? So, ang dapat natin malaman, paano ba mag-imbita si Lord? Iba-ibang style. Sabi niya doon sa nauna, what do you want? Simpleng-simple. Pag tinan niyo kasi ang tao, what do you want? It means that you're interested with the person. Because I'm not telling the person what I want, but I'm asking the person, what do you want? So, immediately, you communicate concern, you communicate love, and you communicate the willingness to look at the whole matter from the point of view of another person. Kaya sabi niyo, what do you want? At nung nagtanong, eh, saan po ba kayo nakatira? Alam niya na, yung oriental politeness and oriental obliqueness, yung ating kaligoy-ligoy, mga eastern people din yung mga Israelites, tulad natin. Kaya meron tayong ibang paraan ng pagkocommunicate, hindi brutally frank, hindi frontal, kaligoy-ligoy, pa the place, the place. Sa kalabawang hataw, sa kabayo ang latay. Ganong klaseng mga communication. Kaya makiramdam, napaka-importante. Sabi niya, ano bang gusto niyo? Eh, saan po ba kayo nakatira? Hindi rin sinabi ko anong gusto. Pero ano yung unsaid? Gusto po namin kayong makilala. Yung pagtatanong. Pero hindi sinabi, gusto namin kayong makilala. Ano bang inyong height? Ano inyong weight? Anong favorite color? Anong inyong moto? Hindi ka nun, sabi, saan po ba kayo nakatira? Ang ganda ng usapan, very oriental. Poetry talaga, kailangan mong i-decipher at kailangan mong i-interpret. That's why the culture is very, very sophisticated. At ganyan pa ang kultura natin mga Pilipino. Paligoy-ligoy, padaplis-daplis. Kailangan marunong tayo makiramdam. And, what else do we learn about Jesus that He was very accommodating? Sabi ng dalawa, saan po ba kayo nakatira? It's as good as saying, pwede ko ba makitulog? Because ang naging ending, the two spent the night with Him. The Lord is very accommodating. What else do we know about Him that He calls, that He invites people? Merong mga lumalapit sa Kanya ng kusa, tatanggapin niya. Merong mga hindi lumalapit, tinatawag din niya. Siya mismo ang nag-initiate. And what else do we know about Him that He discerns men's minds. Alam niya. Even as we are in this hall today, God knows what's in our minds. Alam niya. Kaya nung sinabi niya kay Nathaniel, o oh, kumusta ka naman, isang napaka-banal at napakalinis na Israelita. Napapanan niyo po ako makilala. Eh kanina pa, bago ka pa man lang sabihan, eh nakita na kita. Wala naman tayong maililihim sa Diyos. Kaya maganda po, pag nag-worship tayo, talagang italaga na natin yung puso mag-worship na. Huwag yung presence lang, huwag yung religious activity lang, huwag yung nandyan lang for being there. But really worship, hindi naman natin kaya ang paglakuan ng Diyos. We cannot hide anything from Him. And then, what is doing about Jesus? That He addresses people's needs. 
the need for shelter, and more importantly, even the need to believe. Nathaniel needed so much to believe. Kaya binigyan siya ni Lord ng kasagutan, nagpakilala ang Panginoon. Maging sa panahon na ito, ang Panginoon pa nagpapakilala sa mga maduda at maraming mga tanong at maraming mga hang-up, pero kailangan, pag nagpakilala na siya, i-acknowledge siya natin. Si Nathaniel, hindi na siya nagmatigas nung sinabi ni Lord na, Aba, isang tunay na Israelite ang dumarating kanya. Paano niyo po ako nakilala? Opening na yun eh. Nag-open siya. Eh kanina, nakita na kita, bago ako paniyaya, kayo nga po ang Diyos. Yung iba, nagpakilala na ang Diyos, nakita na yung point, may pride pa, ayaw pa. Yung iba, ituro mo na yung Bible, sabi niyo, oh, bakit naman kayo walang ganito, walang ganyan sa inyong uh, pananampalataya, ituro mo sa Bible na eto. Sabi, huwag daw ganyan. Yung iba, basta, kahon. Nakita na yung Bible, ayaw pa, paninigasan pa yung dating paniniwala, kasi kumisan pride. Kumu ang nauna sa kanila sa faith, eh halimbawa, mas batang kapatid, ayaw sumunod. Kumu ang nauna, anak lamang, ayaw sumunod ng magulang. Kumu ang nauna, yung katulong, ayaw sumunod ng amo. Meron ganun eh, pag nauna yung iba, ayaw mo nang sumunod, kukontahin mo na sa iba ka naman, para mukha kang unique. Kailangan walang pride para makilala natin ang Diyos. At pag naipakita na yung ating pagkakamalis na natin, ay, I was wrong. Isa sa napakalaking katangian ng isang tao, yung masabi niya, I was wrong. Masabi niya sa kanyang sarili, at lalo na masabi niya sa ibang tao. Dahil congratulations, can you imagine? You now you know you're wrong, therefore you are now wiser. Pero yung mga tao ayaw mag-acknowledge that they were wrong before, these are the people that will forever live in darkness. Either in the darkness of their ignorance, or in the darkness of a wisdom that they do not want to acknowledge, just because of pride. Kaya napakalagay yung meron tayong willingness tulad ni Nathaniel. The Lord reveals Himself. Hindi siya nagkukulang. What are the other great truths to learn from these first four disciples? From John, what can we learn? John the Baptist. Self must be allowed to decrease. You can imagine that John the Baptizer has been ministering probably from his very, very early life. Dahil nung ipinag- dalang tao pa lang siya, nakatalaga na siya as a Nazirite to serve the Lord. Ibig sabihin, hindi ginugupid yung kanyang buhok, hindi siya iinom ng nakakalasing ng mga inumin, etc., etc. Marami siyang seremonya, marami hindi kinakain, na kinakain ng iba. Itinalaga na siya for godly service. Ang tagal na niya nagmi-minister, ang tagal na niyang naglilingkod. Siya yung orig kung tutuusin because for 600 years, more or less, God has been silent. There was no prophet in Israel. There was no direct or new revelation to the people of God. Then John comes out in the wilderness teaching repentance, baptizing with water, breaking the silence of heaven. Kung tutuusin, dapat siya na yung bida, siya na yung sikat, at ang dami-dami nang sumusunod sa kanya. Pero nung dumating sa Yesus, lahat ng kanyang mga disciples, sabi niya, sumunod kayo dyan. Yan ang kordero ng Diyos. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hindi ako. Hindi ako karapat-dapat kahit magtali o magtanggal ng tali ng kanyang sandalyas. I am nothing. And then Jesus said, I mean, John the baptizer said, He must increase and I must decrease. Para si Jesus, makilala ng mga tao ng lubos. Para si Jesus, sundan ng mga tao ng ganap. Yung mga leaders, yung mga teachers, yung mga tao na tinitingala ng kapwa-tao, we must all decrease so Jesus can increase. Napaka-importante yun. Hindi yung we already build a cult or a religion around our persons and personalities na tayo na yung sika, na tayo na yung bida, tayo na yung lahat-lahat. Wala dapat tao na nalilibang o nalalasing kahit ano pa man ang laki o liit ng kanyang tagumpay sa kanyang ministry. Self must be allowed to decrease so that people will see God. Kadalasan, hindi nakikita ng Diyos ang mga tao dahil nakatingin sila sa atin and we have an ego this big and God is hidden behind us. Hindi yung nakikita ng mga tao ang nakikita nila yung kapwa-tao kaya nawawala ng gana. So, sabihin eh, kung ganyan lang naman yung mga born-again Christians, wag na lang, balik na lang ako sa dati kong relihiyon. O kung ganyan lang naman yung teacher, o singer, o choir director, o pastor, o deacon, o elder, wag na lang, ayoko na. Kaya, sabi ni John, I must decrease para si Kristo na nasa likod niya will increase. Alam niyo yung eclipse, natatakpan ng buwan yung araw, nagdidilim, kadalasan ganon. Natatakpan natin si Jesus, nagdidilim sa church, nagdidilim sa bayan, nagdidilim sa bahay, kasi tayo yung nag increase at hindi si Lord. One of the great things we can learn from the first disciples is to let Jesus increase. The Lord must be allowed to increase. 
So as we decrease, the Lord must be allowed to increase. And then what can we learn from Andrew and the other one? That we should listen to a godly person's endorsement. Si Andrew at saka yung isa sinabihan siya ni, ni John. Yan ang sundan nyo, the Lamb of God. So listen to a godly person's endorsement. Also, John must be allowed to decrease and the Lord allowed to increase. Kung isan yung mga leaders natin, willing naman sila mag-decrease, pero yung mga tao ang ayaw. They want their leaders to become gods. They want their teachers to become gods. So ang Diyos natatakpan. So John must also be allowed to decrease and the Lord allowed to increase. Yung mga tao sana, huwag na, John, ikaw na lang ang aming leader. Sanay na kami sa iyo, ikaw naman talaga ang gano'y. Eh. Pero, pumayag sila na mawala sa eksena si John. And John receded into the wings of the stage. And the Lord began to take center stage. Napaka-importante. And of course, what else can we learn? Follow Jesus. Pag sinabi niyang, follow me, follow. And converse with Jesus. They opened with, where are you staying? It was just an opening. And you know what it led to? They became disciples for life. What else can we learn? Accept Jesus' invitation. Sabi niya, come and you will see. Pag niyayaya natin yung mga tao, hindi ka mag-attend ng retreat o come. Ano naman ang mangyayari doon? Baka naman ganito, baka ganyan. Come and see. Tingnan mo. Kung ayaw mo, di wag. Kung gusto mo, stay. But give yourself a chance. You know, responsible evangelism is giving the people a chance to accept or reject Christ. Hindi naman kung mag evangelize ka o soul winning eh. Automatic that people would accept. But at least you must give them a chance to accept or reject. But you must maximize the chances that they would accept because of a good presentation. It helps. It's not everything, but a good presentation helps. What else can we learn from Andrew and the other one? Find your brother Simon and testify. Si Andrew, the moment na siya ay nakakilala kay Jesus, pinuntahan niya ang kanyang kapatid na si Pedro. And Peter became one of the giants of the church later on. Not Andrew. But remember, Peter could have not been there and would have not been there had it not been for his brother Andrew's testimony. The Andrew naman tayo. So you can be a Peter, you can be an Andrew. Both of them have been very, very vital parts in the growth of the Lord. What can we learn from Philip, from whom our country was named? Do not be stalled by resistance or opposition. Nung sinabi ni Nathaniel, can anything good out of na- come out of Nazareth? Hindi sabi, ay, ayaw mo, bahala ka sa buhay mo, ayaw mo, wag. Hindi niya ginanon. Hindi niya kinalaban, hindi siya nakipagtalo. Hindi siya pumayag na ma-discourage yung tanyang, in- uh, yung tanyang invitation just because there was an initial rejection. Pinaganda niya lalo yung packaging at lalo niyang inimbita yung tao. Huwag kayong bumigil up. Ang nagwawagi ay di umaayaw. At ang umaayaw ay di nagwawagi. Sabi nga ng uh, isang slogan ng araw. What can we learn from Nathanael? Be willing to change your mind. So in conclusion, the Lord calls. The Lord calls ready-made and hand-me-down disciples. Tulad ng mga dating disciple ni John the Baptist, tinawag niya, that was ready-made and hand-me-down. But the Lord also calls new disciples. Tinawag niya si Philip. The Lord also calls instantly believing disciples, yung naniwala agad. And the Lord also calls biased and closed, so to speak, disciples. In other words, lahat ng uri ng tao, tinatawag niya. Hindi lang isang uri, lahat. Kaya lahat tayo, pwede rin niyang tawagin. And the Lord blesses His disciples. Are you being called to discipleship? Yun ang tanong. Tayo po ba ay Philip or Nathanael or Andrew or Peter? or John. What is the obstacle? Meron bang hadlang para tayo maging good disciples of the Lord? Baka bias? Baka ay ayoko maging disciple ng Diyos. Tama na lang yung follower-follower ng kapwa ko follower. Kasi wala akong oras. Kasi baka ako maabala. Kasi this, kasi that. Kasi may minimaintain ako na secret sinful life. Kasi meron akong ganitong bias against the church. Dapat tayo lahat willing to be disciples. Dahil ang utos ni Lord sa Matthew sa ending chapter, make disciples of all nations. Hindi tayo dapat magkasya na maging kristyano bagamat yun ay mabuti. Kailangan tumasen sa lahat maging disciples. Maging tagasunod talaga ni Kristo, hindi lang tagapakinig, tagasunod. At pagkatapos doon, hindi lang tayo maging disciples, kundi tayo maging disciples as well. 
habang may buhay, habang meron tayong hininga, habang pumipinting ang ating puso, huwag tayong makontento dun sa degree and level of our spirituality and involvement with the Lord and the Lord's Church. Kailangan from hearer to doer. From follower to leader of other followers. It is important. The Lord is calling people to discipleship. What can be your obstacle? Do you facilitate other people's discipleship? Baka naman hindi na nga tayo willing maging disciple. Yung mga kaibigan, kamag-anak, asawa, nanay, anak natin, eh nagiging na ng disciple, pinipigil pa natin. Dahil gusto natin, we will increase in their lives and Christ should decrease. Na ako na lang kasi kasuhin mo, akong alagaan mo, akong tingnan mo, akong hangaan mo, akong paglingkuran mo, akong sambahin mo. Nangyayari yun eh. Kung minsan yung asawa, obstacle sa pagiging disciple ng kanyang asawa. Yung anak, nagiging obstacle. Yung magulang, yung kaibigan, yung kapatid, yung mga trabaho, yung mga pangarap, nagiging obstacle. Remember, when all the chips are down and you face the throne of Jesus, what's important really is if we have become disciples. And more than that, if we have become faithful disciples. Huwag kayong pumayag na kapwa taon nyo lamang, at gusto ko emphasize lamang, L-A-M-A-N-G, lamang, papalitan nyo yung Diyos sa inyong buhay. Kapwa nyo lang na creation yan, kapwa nyo lang yan umaasa ng Diyos, kapwa nyo lang na tumatanggap ng pagpapala ng Diyos, hindi siya dapat payagan, sino man siya, na humadlang sa ating relasyon sa Diyos. It's very important to emphasize that. Matatandaan ninyo itong si Abraham. Ang tagal lang hintay ng anak. Nung nagkaroon ng anak, sinabi ni Lord, pakioffer mo nga dun sa bundok ng muraya yung anak mo. And then, Abraham brought Isaac to the mountain at nung kanya nang sasaksakin ng bata at susunugin, i-offer sa Diyos, ay pinigil siya ng anghel. Hindi naman in-explain kung bakit ginawa yun. Pero meron akong isang uh, theory na maaaring at that point, Isaac was becoming a little bad in the life of Abraham. That Isaac was becoming an obstacle to his worship, to his discipleship, to his faithfulness to God. At kinailangan lang mapatunayan, hindi ng Diyos sa kanyang sarili, ha? kundi ni Abraham sa kanyang sarili, na Diyos pa rin ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay. Na nung hingi ng Diyos yung anak, ibinigay. At nung ibinigay niya, nalaman niya uli, ang Diyos pa rin ang number one sa kanyang buhay. At pag nalaman naman, malinaw ng lahat na Diyos pa rin ang number one, therefore, hindi kaagaw ng Diyos, eh, hindi na niya i-eliminate. But the Lord eliminates yung kanyang mga kaagaw. Sabi niya, I am a jealous God. And he's entitled to jealousy. Rational yun. Tama lang. Kinrate niya tayo, sinusustain niya tayo, iniligtas niya tayo, lahat galing sa kanya. Dapat lang siyang number one. Kaya pag napatunayan natin sa ating sarili at sa Diyos na hindi naman number one yung tao, hindi na niya tatanggalin. Pero subukan yung gawing number one, malamang natanggalin. Because the Lord tolerates no rival. Kaya ilalagay ninyo yan sa puso ng ating mga anak, asawa, magulang, kahit sino, nobyo, nobya. Hello, number two ka lang sa buhay ko. Ang number one ang Diyos. But if you can say that of course nicely with a smile, better. Pero wala namang dapat magdamdam. Wala sa lugar pag nagdamdam kayo na number two lang kayo dahil number one Diyos. Sobra naman kung gusto yung number one pa kayo. Mag-create muna kayo ng Milky Way, ng mga galaxies, bago kayo mag-ambisyon na maging number one. Ngayon, kasi nyo kaya, matkontento na kayo number two or three or four. Kasi, God should be number one. Sabi sa Bible, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Kung minsan, sobra tayong atas sa mga human relationships to the point that we detach from God, forgetting that in heaven, there are no more such human relationships. Ang Lord mismo ang nagsabi, ah, wala nang asa-asawa sa langit. Lahat yan, pantay-pantay mga anak ng Diyos. So do not ever let your human relationship eclipse your relationship with God. Because that is more lasting. And actually, it is really more important. We are not anti-family. We are not anti-spouse or children or parents. But remember, ilagay nyo yung kapwa nyo creation sa tamang lugar. Huwag nyo silang ilagay sa altar at sambahin dahil hindi sila bagay doon. Diyos lang ang bagay doon. The Lord calls disciples even today, but are you willing to become one? Let's bow our heads for the Lord. I like to pray for people. Alam ninyo, tinatawag kayo ni Lord sa discipleship, pero merong hindrance. I know you like to surrender that hindrance to the Lord. You like to say, Lord, hindi ko kaya, pero turuan niyo ako how. Or kaya ko, pero kakayanin ko by your power. 
And you want to say, Lord, from here on, I like my life to come. Ayoko maging hearer. Gusto ko maging doer. Ayoko ng doer lang. I like to be your follower. And if you would allow me, I like to lead others to you. Stand up where you are, those who are being called by the Lord. And you like to consecrate yourself to discipleship. Praise God. And you want to say, Lord, gusto ko maging disciple niyo. Maging tagasunod niyo at kumaari mag-lead pa ko ng iba na susunod sa inyo. Subalit may obstacle. I like now to surrender that obstacle to you. Like Nathaniel, ang obstacle niya was bias. It was on his mind. Kung ano man yung obstacle sa aking buhay, Lord, I want to make my life count. Ayoko kung buupo na lang kong linggo at kikinig. Gusto ko mag-firm. Gusto ko may mangyari. Yung binigay mo sa akin mga kapangyarihan, mga karunungan, mga kagalingan, magamit sa paglilingkod sa iyo. Amang Diyos, nakatayos sa iyong harapan ang mga anak mo. Kilala mo lahat ang laman ng aming puso, tulad ng alam mo ang laman ng puso ni Nathaniel. Nothing. There is nothing that we can hide from you. So, ano man, Panginoon, ang obstacles, mga sagabas sa buhay ng mga kapatid na ito, maaaring mga takot, mga pangamba, emotion, attitude, other human beings, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I'm asking you, Father, set them free. And let everyone realize that they are free to obey you. Free to be your children. Free to obey you. Free to worship you and to serve you. Panginoon, sa pagtayo ng mga kapatid na ito, turuan mo sila how to be free in your name. And how to go through these hurdles and obstacles. At nawa, Panginoon, sa pantayong ito. Ngayon man, sa sandaling ito, palinawin niyo ang calling niya sa mga kapatid na ito. At matagpuan niyo sila, hindi lang hearers, but doers of your word. Hindi lang followers of other human beings, but they can become leaders as well. Under your guidance and overall leadership. Bless these people who stand before you right now, O God. As your servant lifts his hand toward heaven, I ask you, Ilinga mo ang iyong mukha sa kanila at kahabagan sila. Paliwanagin niyo, Panginoon, ang iyong mukha sa kanila. At bigyan sila ng kapangyarihan. Kapangyarihan to move mountains. Kapangyarihan, O Lord, to obey you and to make you number one. And to make a difference. To serve and to be faithful and to be fruitful. Brothers and sisters, according to your faith, may it be done unto you. And in a moment of silence, make a very personal prayer to God as the Spirit leads you right now. Salamat, Lord, sa pagdinig niyo sa mga dalangin. Salamat at kayo, Diyos, na patuloy na tumatawag. Salamat, Lord, maaari kami maging disciples niyo. Our only other choice is to become disciples of your enemy. So we thank you for the privilege to be a disciple of you and not of him who comes from darkness. Thank you, Father. May you continue the good work that you have begun. And may you see these brothers and sisters glorifying your name. So they able to talk to you. Ang katatapos po mensahe ni Pastor Ed Lapis ay pinamagatang Come and see.
Kayo po ay na-bless ng programang ito o may comments o suggestions. Mag-text sa Radio Listener Text Liwanag. Type RL space name space address space ang inyong mensahe at ipadala sa 0917-549-2624. Oras na po para pansamantalang magpaalam ang programang Day by Day. Tayo po'y magsama-sama mula lunes hanggang biyernes. Magandang gabi po at mabuhay ang Panginoong Hesus.